All right, well, I've got the pump installed now. It's all hooked up. I filled the reservoir up with uh, the uh, fluid that I said, and then I ran an external ground to it just so I don't have that ground wire in the way while I got to bring the pump down again to, to fill it up. So um, let's go ahead and try it, see what happens. Wow, I can't believe how much fluid I'm putting in there. Let's see if I can move you over here. This looks worse than I thought. I've got oil coming out of the cover here and that squirting I'm hearing is coming from the cylinders okay so what you're looking at is the aftermath of putting the convertible top up uh, during the testing of the motor and uh, what this proves is that uh, you know I moved the weakest component from the pump to the cylinder I'm guessing that's the cylinder that has exploded and when I mean exploded, it actually pushed oil everywhere. It, it splashed oil all the way up to the front of the, of the dashboard. So it blew out of here all the way to the front of the car and made a big mess on the floor. So what I'm going to do now is take out the back seat and take off these panels. All right. Well, I've taken out the back seat and separated the door jam from the thing so I could get in here and see. So now you can see, you know, the oil mess that's on the floor. There's an oil mess down in here. There's a puddle back there behind the rear seat. And that led me to finding out what went wrong. And that would be right here. So this pipe has broke and squirted hydraulic oil everywhere. So um, I think the best way to attack this problem is probably just to, to fix everything. So, uh, I'm going to look to see, I got to replace the lines obviously, but I've got to see, um, how much of a hassle it is going to be to take the rest of this out. I don't think it'll be too bad, but, um, I've never taken this seat out and I think I'm going to have to have it out of here to do that. And it seems to be attached somewhere in the back there I just don't see where yet so I have to do a little research on that get that seat out and then start replacing the lines I'll have to order them so um, we'll have to, I'll continue this once I get them back so. all right guys I brought you back after I've made a little progress here as you can tell I got the rear seats out now um, I literally just got done removing the lines and I'm going to remove this bolt and this bolt and that's going to release the cylinder and then I'm going to have a look at these cylinders to see exactly you know what's entailed of course when you take those lines off you're going to have nothing but hydraulic fluid in the bottom of your car so you know just be ready for some puddles of hydraulic fluid which um, you know it's it's not going to hurt anything back here so it's just sitting on top of metal all right well I wanted to bring you back I have the cylinders out now and so the first thing to know is to get out the bolt that connects to the top that makes it uh, go up and down. This would be the point where it connects to the top and actually uh, runs the stuff. That is a 9 16 socket uh, and a 9 16 back end. So uh, you'll want a 9 16 open end on the back of here and then socket on the front and then you can take that bolt out. The bolt that holds the cylinder in place uh, is a um, it's a 13 16 so 13 16 socket there's nothing on the other side of this so this goes right through not this hole but the hole over here and um, uh, you, you pull it out that way now okay let me take a look at these uh, cylinders and see if there's any hope to restore them 
All right, well, I pulled the, the lines, the convertible top lines, out of the car. And I pulled the new ones out that are laying over there um, out also. And then I noticed that they're not the same length. As you can see, this bottom one is much shorter. They both start about the same place. But as you're going along, you'll need, notice where it hooks into the pump is here on this one, on the lower one. And then about another foot away on the top one. So the top one is the top. That is the uh, part that makes the top go up. And it's much longer. As you can see where this section broke off. The bottom one is already ended and the top one goes on for another foot or two. So, yeah, they're not the same. And I was like, oh boy, let's hope the uh, new ones are. So, I brought the new ones over too and stretched them out. And uh, it's basically the same thing. So, the bottom one's there. You can see pumps uh, meets into the pump there while the top one um, is much further away. So the top one is much longer, thankfully, than the bottom one because that wasn't obvious to me when they were rolled up in the plastic that they came in. So let me uh, go over to the car and let's put the first one in. All right, well, the pump's right here. It's just a matter of sticking this line in. There's not a lot to see. However, there are two clips and you might be able to see those two holes there and the two holes over there. Those are for, whoops, these two clips right here. Uh, they hold the lines in, but you've got to pop them out uh, to, uh, to install them and to remove the old ones. So let me get the lines in and then bring you back. All right, well, the lines are connected. I didn't tighten them up, but they're in the pump. So the bottom line is to put the, the top down and the top line is to put the top up. So the top line is the longer line and the bottom line is the shorter line. So let's see the inside. All right, well, as you can see, they're laid out. The bottom line, the one that goes way down there is the top and the shorter one is, well, it's the top of the cylinder, but it makes the car, the top go down. So now the next thing to do is to install the um, pistons, cylinders into their position. I've got new ones, so let me get set up for that. All right, so these are the new cylinders I got in from, from China via California. So they were about half as much as I've seen them anywhere else. So it was like a little over $100 for two of them. And normally these suckers are going for like a hundred and seven dollars a piece now the only big thing that i noticed the only difference that i really noticed between uh, these ones and the uh, double the more expensive ones is the doubles are uh you know the hundred and some dollar a piece versus the fifty some dollar a piece uh the hundred dollar ones this is all one piece so there's no um junction here where the cap is like um, pressed onto the uh, cylinder like it is on the top. All the tops are pressed on with some kind of machine that finishes off, but the bottoms can be solid. And that's the way the originals were. But that was the only thing I saw. And you know, these cylinders don't get used too much and I really don't see an issue going this way. Install it in the car and uh, hook up the lines, bleed the system and see how it works. So let's get to it. So, I'm going to mount these with the cylinders, with the uh, eyelets for the, uh, where the connection is for the hydraulic line, sorry, uh, inside, so it's against the wheel well right here. So let me get them on there right now. Let's see if I get this to go in. All right. Get that started on the pin back there. Fights me a little bit. All right, there it is. All right. The pin lined up there. This is the bolt. All right, 
So that looks like it's in. All right, that line feels okay. This line feels okay. All right, the cylinder. Holy mackerel, here we go. It's gotta go up here. up right there all right so I feel good that that's all secured everything's on there loose but it's in there huh. oh I see why I was thinking that I could move it but I forgot it's it's locked up to the convertible so now it, it's not gonna go it'll tilt back and forth so let me put the other side on and then uh, we'll tighten up all the connections after I'm sure that everything looks okay. All right, now we're set up on the other side. And uh, you would think that there's more room to work back here than there is. But I can tell you that there's room, but it's hard to get really in a comfortable position. So here's the other one. I'm going to take the two covers out, attach the lines just like before. Let's see what this one does. Put the cylinder in, line it up on that pin. Okay this one in oh, well try to pull that cylinder out all right okay perfect oh yeah it was much better the second time now it's just a matter of tightening these all right back with the uh, 7 16 wrench and we'll just tighten these up So there's the lines on, the plug is right here. There. All right, now what you would do is fill this up with oil, put some kind of rag under here to catch the oil, leave the plug out until I'm done uh, with the, um, the operation of, of leading it. Right. Let's put some oil in it. Now, I'm using this stuff here, uh, Johnson's Hydraulic Jack Oil. So you could use transmission fluid. It had, it had, uh, whoa. this is like a mineral oil. It had it in it before, so I'm gonna use it again. Okay. All right. It's just leaking out. the oil. Let's try to move it. See what it does. Okay, got a big problem. Looks like my, my thread down below is not in right. It is definitely leaking. So I've got to take that out and reset it. Let me try again. It's still leaking. It looks like it's leaking, not in the joint. It looks like it's, it's not, it's not leaking out the joint. It's leaking. You know, right here. Yikes. Okay. Let's take it out and see what's going on. Okay. 
Well, it doesn't look cross-threaded, which is good. I don't see anything that's screwed up. The only thing I see is, you know, it looks like that's got to be pressed tighter against the thing. So it just looks like this has got to roll in further. So maybe I just didn't have it tightened up, tightened up enough. Well, put that in. Damn. All right. Well, oops. Let me get it in the camera. I got it on the bench. Um, there was like a sliver of of. Um, let me put this. Up here it might be easier to see a sliver of steel or aluminum in there I don't know if it was left over from the manufacturing process or something that I did but when I cut off one of the old lines off the old one and I just threaded that in there without that piece of steel there and it seems to go to go in just fine so it's in there good. I'm going to go back and try it on the, the line that's, that it's going to attach to. But there was something else that I noticed that I didn't like. And uh, if you look here, everything looks fine. You don't notice a problem until you look in this side. And you go, oh, there's an O-ring in there. Guess what? There's no O-ring here. So I do have an O-ring kit. I'm going to go ahead and find the right O-ring for this. And uh, I think that might be uh, part of the problem, too. So, uh, yeah, let me go ahead and uh, find that O-ring. And just for fun, I went and grabbed the old one. And you can clearly see that there's an O-ring down inside there. So there should have been an O-ring there and an O-ring there. And, of course, it's missing on the other side. So, uh, yeah, let me get the O-ring. Okay, I think that was the winner, so you can probably, you know, see that O-ring in there. All right, well, let's try this again. Once again, a little harder to put in. The next thing to do is to put some more fluid back in the reservoir there and uh, let's oops and we'll test it out here okay filled up the fluid again let's try it again let's go the other way uh oh okay While that was going on, the top fell. So let's see what it does now. Right, the top is coming up. And it seems to be getting stuck right there. Let me just put some oil in it. Let's try again. Halfway mark. Oh, 
Okay, it's down or up. Let me check the oil. Okay, so let's try to put it down. All right, another major issue. Let me show you what happened. You can see this separated from there. It was not put together right. Now it's leaking all kinds of oil. <sighs> it blew right out. It was not put together right maybe that will slow down the leak of oil but yeah I guess now I'm gonna have to go to the manufacturer on that one I don't know if I can flare that or not I don't really want to get into this but let me see what I can do well good news the new line came in today so Let's go ahead and install it and try this again. Well, I was able to install the new line. The new line is now been installed. You can see the pump back here and it's the line on the bottom that you can't see. But uh, that line's been replaced. The new lines are now attached to the, wheel, to the uh, convertible top seals on each side and um, we're all ready to give this thing a test now. So let me go and uh, get in here and flip the switch here. All right, so let's hit the top. It's going up great. All right, it's coming overhead, and it's coming down, and it's down. And, uh, oops, there goes my light. Um, yep, I don't, I don't see any signs of anything leaking. Everything is looking, looking fine. So I think we have a successful fix. There are some takeaways from this, like I mentioned. One of them would be, you know, in a system like this where all the components have kind of aged together, it probably is smart to go ahead and if you're going to take that pump apart and do all the work necessary to get it working, you're going to have to replace the lines, or you should replace the lines and replace the cylinders on the convertible top because they're all, you know, 50 plus years old now or older, depending on your car. And they're, they wore as a set and they probably need replaced as a set. And I guess I didn't think that all the way through when I started this. And uh, it cost me, it cost me some time, really, I guess is the only thing, because I didn't have all the parts together, so I had to do this in stages. But I'm glad that it's all working now, and it just proves that, you know, you can do this yourself and save, you know, quite a bit of money, I think, if I would have paid somebody to do this versus me doing it myself. So I think that it's a well worth venture to go ahead and do this. Um, the interior is out right now in the back, and that just gives me something more to tackle right now, which is I'm going to be tackling the um, the seats, and I'm going to reupholster them. So that's the next project that you can look forward to me bringing you. I have them sitting out here on the back of the trunk, and uh, they're not in any better shape than anything else in this car, really. So... The seats are split and uh, the rear seats split and I need to go ahead and fix that. So I've ordered the parts. I just about have everything I need to do it now. So look for that video in the near, very near future. So, uh, you know, I want to uh, uh, remind you to uh, subscribe if you like this kind of content. 
let me know um, in the in the comments below what you uh, think about this process. And uh, until next time, guys. Ciao.